Welcome to Stage Mom Podcast, a podcast for breakthrough bands and artists. Today we have Father Figure. Father Figure is an indie folk rock artist out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, releasing her debut single, Going Through the Motions, today, May 6th. I am super excited for this, as I know all of the time and energy put into this first original by Father Figure. Not only is she an incredible songwriter and multi-instrumentalist, but she is also my daughter. Such a special podcast for me. I can't wait to see where she ends up because I know it will be somewhere big. Follow her on Instagram at at Ken's Maureen and go listen to her debut single on any music platform now. So we have Father Figure with us today, and I'm going to let her introduce herself and let us know what she's all about. Uh, my name is Mackenzie. I'm 19, and I'm starting a project under the name of Father Figure. Okay. All righty. So um, how long have you been doing music? Um, well, I started... Um, oh, wait. I wanted to say in the beginning, this is my mom. I forgot to say oh. <laughs> So that people... No. Do we look alike? <laughs> um, well, I took my first drum lesson at 13. 12 or 13. What? You didn't take your first drum lesson at 12 or 13. You were in first oh, grade. Oh, no, that's, yeah, that's what I meant. Lies. Lies. Uh, I was in first grade when I started, but then I stopped, and then I started again when I was 12 or 13. And then I taught myself guitar when I was, like, 15. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So you play guitar and drums and you're yes. singing now. Yes. Okay. Um, so what's the, what was the biggest, can't say difference, but difficulty learning, like you were a drummer. Now you're going to be in the front of stage. What was the most challenging thing with that? Um, that transition? Well, they're just so hard to compare since they're so different. I guess just like being the center of what people are looking at in a way and getting over singing into a microphone and getting over playing with a band since this is my first time. I mean, I played drums for a band, but this is my first time singing with a band. Um, so that was definitely the most challenging. Part. Okay. So, all right. Obviously not many people have heard of you since this is a new project. Mm -hmm. How would you describe your music? Well, um, well, I'm coming out with a single soon, but it's for an EP I'm working on. And um, I would compare it to Phoebe Bridgers slash, I mean, some of my inspirations are Phoebe, Elliot Smith, Bright Eyes. So sort of like a folky, but like modern take on folky. Sort okay. Of and so, all right, so you mentioned you're coming out with a, an EP. Yes. Did you, is that self-written? Did you join hands with anybody or? Yes, I wrote all the songs myself. Um, but obviously for this song, I recorded it and had someone help with production. Okay. All right, did you um, record it yourself or? I recorded at Vanquish Studios um, with Joseph. Okay. And then you just had someone else produce it? And... Yes. Okay. Um, so tell me about your songwriting process. Um, usually, I mean, it's just me on my guitar. Um, sometimes I'll try to start with a melody. I'll just play around on my guitar. And if I like a certain chord progression, I'll try to write lyrics to it. Or I'll go back and look through my notebook and see if anything goes with that. Um, I feel like, I mean, for this song that I'm going to release, I, it was like one of the only times I actually sat down and like, I fully wrote everything in one sitting. Um, usually a lot of my songs, I just put bits and pieces together, mm -hmm. um, because I just sort of, if I have a lyric pop into my head, 
I'll write it down just throughout the day and stuff. So a lot of my songwriting is just piecing those things together. Um, so yeah, I, I guess a mix of like starting with guitar, starting with lyrics, trying to piece it together. Mm -hmm. And what do you say is the main source of inspiration for your songs? Source of inspiration, I guess just life. And I mean, I write what I'm feeling. So whatever I'm feeling at the time, a lot of my lyrics, I feel like just pop into my head and I don't really know what it means until after mm -hmm. I've written a song. Um, so yeah, I guess that's inspiration. And then like just thinking of musical influences mm -hmm. or I don't know, you can be inspired by anything really. Yeah. Okay. So um, what skills do you think you've learned to help you in your new singing career now? Skills I've learned, like yeah. while learning to be like the front. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> skills. I don't know. Um, I think I've gotten better. I mean, I've been practicing with a band. Um, I've gotten better at just being more comfortable singing into a microphone mm -hmm. since this is the first time I've done that. I'm still not totally comfortable, but, um, yeah. How are you going to do that? that skill, like, though. how are you, how are you going to do that? Uh, cause you have an event coming up on May 7th. Yes. Stage how, mom mini fest. Yes. At Lauderdale brewery. You mm -hmm. come on at 1 PM, 1 yes. PM guys. Um, so it's not too early and it's not too late. So hopefully I see everyone there to see her big debut. However, no pressure there. But like, how are you going to do that? Like, do you think that it's going to be hard for you to kind of like speak into the microphone as opposed to sing? Like, are you going to be able to say, hey, guys, how are you doing tonight? Because I, I actually have Tabby doing my hosting as far as talking into the microphone because I'm not going to be able to do that. Uh -huh. So how are you going to do it? Well, I think you could consider I'm much more outgoing than you. Well, I mean, before I started rehearsing with the band, I felt very nervous about that. Like, I wasn't sure how I was going to get over. I'm pretty shy, so I wasn't sure how I'd get over that. But I think I've just had so much fun practicing with these amazing people. And it's honestly not really about at the end of the day, like, it's not, I know it sounds cheesy, but it's not about, like, how good you sound. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's I want to sound good, of course. but, like, I just hope people have fun watching us or feel something watching us, and I don't really think it matters how good you sound. Mm -hmm. It's more about your attitude, and I think we're good with that, mm -hmm. and it's just about having fun, and I've had a lot of fun, so I think I'm not too worried about what other people are going to think, mm -hmm. which would be the root of yeah. fear. So, yeah. That's what you have to just let go of. Yeah. Yeah. As long and as you're I having think, a good time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm playing with experienced musicians who have played before. So, mm -hmm. I mean, they're not going to get nervous. So if everyone else around me is cool and not freaking out, then I think I'm yeah. good. Yeah. They'll be cool. I think they'll keep you calm yeah now all right so this band that you have mm -hmm. is it a permanent band is it a band for hire what is it yeah like, who are they well so it's gonna be val on guitar and val she's in heat stroke rats yes that's okay. her other band um devin on drums he's in mango juice mm -hmm. and jeremy on bass mm -hmm. he um he's in sleeping in and other he has other projects as well mm -hmm. Um, and they're all super cool and have really helped me a lot, mm -hmm. I think, and just made me feel more confident with mm -hmm. what I'm doing. Um, they're sticking around to like help me for future shows and stuff. So I wouldn't want like a revolving door of different people coming in. Right. I just wouldn't like that. So I'm glad that I have people who are sticking around. Right. So, all right. So speaking of other musicians that are seasoned, um, in all the time that you've been involved in music, is there anything that uh, another musician, like what's the best advice you've ever received from one? 
Well, why are you laughing at me? Because I was just telling you what someone said, and I thought of it. And so, uh, I was going through like the production process of the song I'm putting out, and I was just having trouble translating what I wanted to say. Like I could hear it in my head, but I don't know much about music. Um, to where I'd be able to be like, do this, play this, exactly. Um, so yeah, that's been a struggle for me to like articulate what I want. But um, something that helped open my eyes a little bit, um, the bassist and father figure Jeremy, he was saying how um, if you're talking to a producer and stuff, you want to sort of give them examples of what your goal to sound like is, but like times 10. So with this song I'm putting out, um, you might not hear it, but like some of the things I sent were guitar parts of like whole songs and stuff mm -hmm. like very, I mean, not like, like the softer songs from whole. Um, so, and just things that you wouldn't really expect to send but I think that's really important because you're just taking bits and pieces from other artists um, because by the time it's produced for your song, it's going to be a bit watered down. Mm -hmm. So I think that was really helpful for me to not think of a song that I like that I want to sound exactly like. It's more about just being inspired by pieces of songs, I think, mm -hmm. rather than me sending a Phoebe Bridger song to a producer right. and saying, I want to sound like that. Like, that could be good, too. But I think I now see how this could be, like, yeah. better. And so after Jeremy told you that and you relayed that over to Chris, the producer, mm -hmm. did, did it come back good? Yeah. Um, it definitely helped make the song sound more darker which was the problem i was having it just sounded very bright and i mean the song's been through so many phases i feel <laughs> like and it's a lot different than how i started it but it still has like the feeling i was going for even though it doesn't sound exactly how it started in my head i'm still happy with how it ended up mm -hmm. okay good and what's the name of the song oh the song is going through the motions okay so what is it about music that makes you feel most passionate? I mean, I don't, I think the thing about music is there's no one thing. It's just sort of everything. And it's sort of something you can't really name or talk about. And that's um, why you feel so much listening to music. And I think I'm a pretty reserved person. So music helps me gives room and space to express myself mm -hmm. or let myself feel what I'm feeling. Which is important for you mm -hmm. because you're so reserved. Yeah. You have to get it out. Yeah. It's just like an outlet. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So um, what are you looking most forward to with your upcoming event? Like, what what is it that you're excited about? I'm just excited to play live. I love live music and I'm just excited that this is actually happening because I've always wanted to do this and I've always just not like that I was scared it's just I'm pretty lazy and <laughs> I never like really went after what I wanted to do but I just felt like it was a good time to do it so I'm just excited to play live mm -hmm. yeah so being that you were in a band before, can you tell us about one of the worst performances that you've ever been a part of? Hmm. So... I kind of don't feel like you guys ever had any. Oh, oh no, we had pretty oh, bad. that one. See, are you thinking of the same one? I don't know. You tell me first and then I'll... So, it was... To give more context, it was after we played the best show of our lives at Revolution Yes, Live. this is exactly what yeah. I was thinking of. <laughs> we played at Revolution Live. We got home super late. It was, yeah. We were just sort of like 
not burnt out, but like we just played like the best show and we mm-hmm. had a super early show the next day. In Palm Beach. Right? It wasn't early. We had to be there at seven for some reason though. And then we just sort of stood around for three hours doing nothing. I think nothing. you stood around for longer yeah. than that. Yeah, it was dumb. Um, <laughs> and it was in like this huge amphitheater with literally just our parents there. <laughs> And I couldn't hear anyone, and we just sounded awful. It, it was horrible. But it wasn't you guys. It was the sound system. I don't know what the heck they were doing. It was, yeah. Us was... parents were laying in the little banana-looking things, like, yeah. passed out in the middle of the field. Yeah. <laughs> it was awful. It was horrible, yeah. What I couldn't wait bodies? for that to be over. God, that was awful. I'm trying to think. Um, that was the beer craft wine festival. What, what the hell was yeah, that? Yeah, something. And then craft there was, like... And... There was this other band that was verified on Instagram, so it was like, oh, wow, this is, like, a big band. And then they got there, and they were just wearing, like, tight skinny jeans, and, like, <laughs> it was just like, what is this? Like, I don't know. They were so <laughs> annoying. They and, thought they were so cool. And there was only one, like, green room. It was, I don't even know what it was, but they were all spread out there, and we had nowhere to sit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. That was the only performance that I could think of that was just awful. I don't know. But I don't think it was as bad as we thought it was. I think it was just we were just so done from the night before. I think, like, something happened, too, where I think Maddie, someone was, like, mad at the other person, so we just were all mad at each other, I think. (laughs) I don't know. That's, like, the vibe I'm feeling, like, thinking back from it. There was, like, tension. But I don't remember. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, that was that was something fun. And then we had to drive all the way home. Oh, God. It was yeah, horrible. it was like super far. So what skill do you think you have that makes you a great musician? Hmm. I think I am very observant. And that could be a good thing to just gain... Just observe life and people and write about it. And you just, I think I have a good eye for writing and I have a good heart, like towards what I'm passionate about. And I have a good heart in general. Thank you. Um, and not that I'm a perfectionist at all. Because I, I am pretty lazy. But I was just going to say, yeah, lazy and perfectionists don't go together. <laughs> I think I'm pretty, like, um, focused on what I want. Like, mm-hmm. I have a clear vision of, like, what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and it took a while for me to get there. So, mm-hmm. I think that's an important thing. Because there's so many good artists mm-hmm. that are super talented, but they just don't know right, right. what they want to do. So, right. I'm glad I kind of do so what's the most valuable lesson that you've learned in this industry because you've been a part of even though this is your first solo type of thing you've been a part of it for since you were a little girl Mm -hmm. so what do you feel is the most valuable lesson that you've learned well this is something i've sort of learned more recently um just as writing my own stuff being a solo artist or whatever yeah um I think you just really have to fake it till you make it kind of thing. Like how? Uh, what do you mean? In terms of just being not in people's face about what you want, but just even if you're kind of hesitant or unsure about something, you just have to take charge of what you want to do mm-hmm. for people to take you seriously. Mm-hmm. I think. And because be aggressive, not, I, I guess in a way, not that I could be aggressive, well, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, but you do have to, I don't know, be aggressive in a way. Yes. Yeah. 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 And confident in what you're doing, even Definitely if you're that, yeah. not really. Yeah. You just have to convince people that you are. Yeah. So, all right. So what artist would you compare yourself to? I know you said Phoebe Bridgers. Yes. Um, Sam Elliott. Elliott Smith. Elliott Smith. <laughs> Uh, Sam Elliott's the wrong industry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean those, but um, another thing I was talking to Jeremy about recently was he was saying how 
it's important to go to the source of inspiration. So I'm inspired by Phoebe Bridgers. Phoebe Bridgers was inspired by Elliot Smith. Elliot Smith was inspired by the Beatles and the Beatles were inspired, whatever. So like you have to really, um, cause by the time you get to Phoebe, it's a watered down mm -hmm. inspiration. Not that Phoebe doesn't have her own style and stuff, but I think there is something really important about going back to like the classics and mm -hmm. like the really well-respected geniuses of right. music and, um, because they do have something mm -hmm. that obviously, yeah. yeah. So I think, what was the question? Oh, where I get inspiration. Yeah. I think, yeah, so it's just important. No, to who you... Who I get inspired No, who you would compare Oh, to. so yeah, I guess you could compare me to Phoebe, but a lot of what I write is also, not to compare me to the Beatles, I'm mm -hmm. saying, but just, like, aspects of their type of music. And but it's funny, all right, so you say, so Mackenzie Portino was inspired by Phoebe Bridgers, who was mm -hmm. inspired by um, Elliot Smith, formerly known as Sam Elliot. <laughs> Um, who was inspired by the Beatles, uh -huh. which I found pretty interesting when you said that a minute ago, because I think you actually fell in love with the Beatles before you even found Phoebe Bridgers. Yeah. So it was kind of like a pyramid thing. Like, yeah. Pretty interesting. Yeah. I think, and there's nothing wrong with being inspired by just Phoebe Bridgers. Yeah. So who's your favorite Beatle? Hmm. And why is that Beatle your favorite? I think Paul. Yeah. I really, I like his attitude towards music because, I mean, John Lennon was sort of like the more out there, whatever, and then Paul was not the serious one, but more this way. I don't know. And I think I respect that about him because mm -hmm. he's a very good musician. Right. Um, who, does, who did most of their writing, um, the Beatles? Because, like, I don't... I, I always, like, said, like, growing up, like, oh, I like this band and this band, but I could never tell you any of the names. Like, y your generation is so different. Mm -hmm. Like, I could tell you every single song from a band, but I could never tell you, like, my favorites, I could tell you the singers' names, but that's about as far into the band as I get. Well, so, you can name I would Beatles. never know, like, mean things like who wrote this and who can wrote that. you name that. all the Beatles, though? All right, so there's Paul and there's John, mm -hmm. and I know John had a son named Julian because I loved julian's one hit that he had okay. um and then i know yoko ono was married to him okay th these are people in because the they're the only ones i know <laughs> you don't know the other two beatles and i know paul mccartney's wife was killed right she hit a tree or i thought she like, i i mean he had and then he married two. a much younger girl i thought one of his wives died from cancer oh, oh maybe i'm thinking of someone else's wife that was killed so liam who's the drummer I haven't got a clue, girl. Ringo. Ringo oh, yeah, Ringo Starr was in that band. And then George Harrison. Oh, that's the first I've ever heard of that person's name. Oh, my gosh. Just stop. You've heard of No, I have not heard his name. Just like when you had me watch that Beach Boys thing. Like, I had no idea. That guy was crazy. Okay. Well, that's different. Like, that's the Beach Boys. No, not everyone knows. Okay, whatever. But um, you asked who did the writing. Yeah, who did most of the writing. It was, I mean, all of them, mostly Paul and John. Okay. Yeah, could, you just watched something on them about that, didn't you? What's yeah, the called? documentary on Disney Plus. Did I try I to didn't watch, watch that with you? No, you would never watch that. I didn't think so. <laughs> All right, so, okay, so you got your May 7th performance coming up, and you're pretty excited about that. First live performance, I'm super excited about it because, like, um, even though she's my daughter, I still have yet to see her sing into i i wouldn't even i couldn't begin to tell you how she holds the microphone so i'm really excited well, i about don't that. hold the microphone oh yeah because you're playing guitar, playing guitar too guitar well. i hate you okay so anyhow so um the local scene do you have a favorite venue and do you have a venue that you're excited to play when once you start getting your ep out and and like how soon do you want to start booking those shows um i mean very soon i have another one coming up um another show yeah really Yes. When? It's under. It doesn't have a date yet, but it is happening. Okay. So I'll let you Am know. I, I'm allowed to come. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I love undergrounds. Um, I would love to play there soon. I love. I would love to play at Churchill's just because it's like 
an iconic place, and I would mm-hmm. love to say I played there. Yeah. Well, you did play there before. Well, yeah, I, but like me. Played okay. There. Um, Poor House would be cool to play. Mm-hmm. I think those are like my main ones. Okay. And I'm excited to play Lauderdale too. Yeah, it'll be fun. Um, I'm sorry, Mackenzie, but I forgot to ask you. How did you come up with Father Figure? Oh, <laughs> well, um, my friend Eli has like a hundred hypothetical band names in his phone that he just writes. A hundred? A lot. He needs to sell them. I told him, like, <laughs> I was like, you should just do that as your job. Like, just make band names. He was like, how is that a career? But whatever. Um, Wasn't well, he a band manager of the Long Sleeves? Yes, and he's in the long sleeves, but um, wow. he, um, well, it's, I think they changed their name again. Did they? No, I think they stuck with long sleeves. I don't know. I'll have to ask him again. Um, but yeah, so he was just reading me a bunch of crazy band names he's thought of, and one of them was No Father Figure. He did say, I think his friend actually made that one, but he wrote it down. Um, <laughs> he, he made most of them, but just not that one. Um, and I heard it. And I was like, I don't know. I just loved it right away. Mm-hmm. Um, Does it have like a meaning to you when you when you first heard it? Did it mean anything to you, or do you just like the sound of it? Well, I mean, it reminded me of I love when female artists take like a male identity sort of thing. So like, there's Boy Genius. Mitski has an album. Be the Cowboy. Saint Vincent has an album. Daddy's Home. So, like, stuff like that I really like. I don't know. I I don't really know what I like about it. I just right. like female taking that sort of right. name. And, like, be the cowboy. That statement is just sort of, like, be... Be a badass? I don't know. Like, I don't know how to explain it. And, like, Daddy's Home is about um, her dad, actually getting released from prison Uh um but then she said in an interview that towards the end of the album after it was finished she sort of felt like daddy represented her like she is like fathering yourself in a way right okay and so i think he wasn't there yeah like she is her own father right so father figure is sort of inspired by that. Not that I fathered myself or anything, Mm -hmm. but I think, I don't know, it just makes a statement like there's a lot of fatherless people in the world right now. No, I I have a father, (laughs) but I I don't know. It's more of, I don't know. It could be interpreted, however. Okay. All right. So let's go back to the local scene. Um, Do you have any favorite local bands? Um, I love... American Psy. Yes. They're playing Sunfest, if anybody yeah. is interested. Like, I genuinely listen to them. So do I. Like, yeah. not just because... I mean, As I, if they're, like, playing on the radio, I listen to them. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mango Juice. I yeah. genuinely I listen genuinely to them I genuinely listen to as them well. as well. Um, who else? Young Fiction. Young Fiction. Genuinely, genuinely listen, listen, to listen, listen, listen to them as well. Uh, yeah, those are, like, my top ones. Okay. All right. So I am going to move on to the You Can Tell Mom Anything segment of my podcast. Okay. You ready for me? Yes. What is currently on your playlist? So much Beach Boys. Like, I I feel like once a year I go through a phase of, like, that's all I listen to forever. Um, Beach Boys? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I've been listening to the Beach Boys like crazy. Um, and a lot of Smashing Pumpkins recently. Mm-hmm. When, when I, like, listen to music, I usually go through intense phases of, mm-hmm. like, that's all I listen to. So I, I haven't really been listening to anything else. You must get that from your Aunt Linda. Oh, really? Because she used to drive me nuts when we would be driving anywhere back when we were teenagers she couldn't even let the song finish before she'd be rewinding it with a cassette player. So she'd have to stop it at the exact spot Mm -hmm. to hear the song again from the beginning. I'm like, why are we not just listening to the whole song? And then you can rewind it. 
And I kid you not, it would be like that for weeks on end. And then all of a sudden she'd find a new song. So at least you've got a variety of you're listening to the whole album. Yeah. Hers was one specific song and it drove me nuts. Yeah, I try not to do that just because if I really like a song, I'm scared that I'll get sick of, sick it. of it. And mm-hmm. I don't want that to happen. Yeah. But it has happened before. Yeah. Where I can't stop listening to a song. Uh, but she really liked The Cure, right? She did. She liked The Cure a lot. She loved them. Um, garbage. She liked Garbage. She liked Ministry. I mean, I liked them too, but I let their whole entire thing play. I didn't mm-hmm. stop it, you know, three verses in. It's, it's crazy. Um, okay. What was your first job? First job was at Barnes & Noble. I worked the starbucks do not call it a starbucks people (laughs) will yell at you (laughs) don't show them a starbucks gift card because you will be yelled at yeah (laughs) um i was i would try to be nice about it but like oh my gosh some like the other workers would be like we're not a starbucks but we have everything starbucks and we have the starbucks Starbucks. logo yeah but anyways (laughs) I worked as a barista there, and then I worked as a bookseller as well. That was like your dream job growing up, remember? I mean, it was like, my dream I want first to work job. At Barnes and Noble so bad. Yeah, I really like because it. you like reading stuff. Okay, what word do you hate hearing? Um, I have. You know, moist. No sliver. No, those are yours. <laughs> Everyone says moist, and like, yeah, I don't love hearing it, but it's not like. I'm cringing at it. It's just like, I think I'm like desensitized to it because everyone's like, <laughs> yeah. moist is so weird. But, um, I, I can't say it, but it means. It's Can an, you spell it? It's another word for something on the female body. Vagina? No. <laughs> another word for something on the female body. Nipple? No. Oh. I hate that as well, kind of, <laughs> the way you just said that, though. Another, belly button. Well, that's male and female. Female body. Boobs? No, I like the word boobs. It's another word for boobs. Breasts. I don't like that, but... Oh, it's just... (laughs) Tease. Yes, stop. (laughs) I hate that. I hate that so much. And then, uh, another word for female body. It's, uh, another word for a cat. I just... (gasps) Oh, yeah, that's an awful word. It's just so, like, vulgar. It is. It is. When I it's hear so it, bad. Like, yeah, I hate that. Yeah, that's how I, so that's much. how I feel when I hear the word you just said. <laughs> well, I don't say it, so no, yeah, yeah. It's a two-syllable one or the one-syllable one. Either or. Yeah. Yeah. Is there the one same. worse than the other? Oh, it's equally hate. I think they're yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, what do you collect? Uh. I don't think I collect anything. I collect, oh, I collect. I just started trying to collect coins for oh, money. Oh, really? Not like coins. Like, like just change. Change, yeah. So yeah. you can cash it in? Yeah. Okay. But I haven't, I've done it once. And I got like 60 bucks. Yeah. Like, did you really do that? Yeah. You did it, huh? I did. Really? You gave me some, <laughs> but I did most of it. <laughs> I'm thinking mine was a majority of it. I don't think so. I'm pretty positive. Yes, I am. Okay, so what is your lazy go-to dinner? Ramen. Yes, everybody's like, so many people say that. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. What movie do you quote the most? I don't find myself quoting movies, but a movie I can watch. TV show, maybe? I don't, I wish Hmm. I did that. Like, people say, oh, I quote that all the time, but like. How do you do that? Like, how do you just... Whatever. Um, but maybe I can watch, and, like, I know all the words, basically, is Mean Girls. Yes. Just because I've seen it, like, a million times. I know. But who's your favorite say. character in Mean Girls? Uh, probably Regina. Yeah. yeah. Isn't she the one that's dead now? That's Rachel McAdams. Oh, it's Rachel McAdams? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So she's alive. And- Are you thinking of Clueless? I don't know what the hell I'm thinking. No, I'm not thinking of Clueless. I'm thinking of Heathers. Oh. Okay. What is your biggest pet peeve? Hmm. My biggest pet peeve. I think just... Oh. I think 
rude people. Yeah. Like, just, I don't know. Well, because you're so nice. And I'm not just saying it because you're my kid. Sometimes you're a pain, but you're very nice and you're a good friend. <laughs> Thank so, you. And you don't talk about people. Mm. That's a really good quality. Thank you. And you are a vault. She will never tell your secrets, ever. She mm. won't even tell me. I'll hear something, and then I'm like, oh, really? I didn't hear that. Oh, really? Mackenzie knows. And I'm like, what? She didn't tell me. Yeah, she won't. She's, yeah. But then I don't put her in the position either where I'm like, Mackenzie, you didn't tell me this. Yeah. Because I'm not going to do that to her. So, anyhow, um, would you rather a night out or a night in? Oh, a night in. Night in? Yeah, doing what? Uh, watching movies. Okay. We're talking. Yeah. We're big talkers, huh? Are you a thinker or are you a doer? I'm a thinker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You are. All right. Do you learn by watching or learn by doing? I mean, both. I guess by doing. Like, you don't really learn something. You want to watch something one time and then do it? Yeah. Just do, I mean, I yeah. think that's everyone. Yeah. But you don't really learn something until you do it. Yeah. Exactly. Like, Hands on. Oh, you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I learned how to drive a stick shift just watching my sisters do it. But I was, it was like, oh, I could do that. You actually did it. That was exactly how I thought it would be in my head. Well, that's pretty yeah. great. I, I didn't jerk it. I didn't, like, sputter. I was so smooth. I was so good. I was like, God, I haven't driven a stick shift in so, so, so long. Um, okay, so what med motivates you the most? Oh. What motivates me? The thought of, like, failing, I guess. Like, what if I don't do this? I'm going to die and the world's going to fall apart. Like, so that's what it is. Like, just like the fear, like, just scaring myself into doing yeah. things, which isn't the best thing. What trait defines you most? Hmm. Hmm. I think everyone would say I'm quiet. Yeah, you are quiet. But, like, that doesn't define me. Like, no. I'm not always quiet. That's kind of like a character trait, like, where people would be like, oh, yeah, Karen, she's quiet. Yeah. But, well, then what's a good trait? Well, I'm thinking that, like, the fact that you're a musician. Oh. Uh, probably. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. What celebrity annoys you the most? Uh, I have a list of people. Well, let's just throw them out there. Um, oh, it's all gonna just slip my mind now. I really don't like, um, sorry people, but Emily Blunt and John Krasinski. You've always, oh, like, always I just hate, like, nurse. celebrity couples that think they're like us and, like, try to act like they're just a common So man. how are they not like us? Because they're rich and they don't live a normal rich. life, like regular, <laughs> like <laughs> us. But they try to appeal like they are. I, I hate celebrities like that. Like, but um, I mean, they're real name? people. I know. Keanu Reeves, he lives life like us, even though he's rich. Oh, I know. But I'm saying. Oh, but they're I mean, not. They is don't. what you're saying. Okay. They try to I got like you. I understand them. what you're saying. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong. I honestly don't know much about them. It's just like, <laughs> just that's assumptions. just the vibe I get them. <laughs> They just act. Oh, and sorry, but Kristen Bell and whoever Dax, Dash Shepherd. Shepherd, yeah, they just all they talk about is each other in interviews, and I'm just done. Like, they okay. like each other. I know you're married and stuff, but like, okay, but I don't care. <laughs> I just don't like them. So. Oh God. Okay, so what is your favorite beverage? Um. Hmm. Why is it such a hard question? I don't know, like Dunkin' or Starbucks or coffee or a matcha. She's not even okay. listening to me. No, it's because I screwed up. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> you lost your question. Just to remember, I thought I did. What? But I, I, <laughs> I somehow skipped over to the rapid fire questions. <laughs> But it's okay. It's all the same questions. Okay. So that was rapid fire. So we're just going to do rapid oh fire. Oh my gosh. 
I was wondering. I'm not really telling my dark secrets right now. I'm just saying what beverage I like. Oh my god! I literally only asked you one question off of the. You can well, tell do you Mama have them? I do. Oh, okay. Do. Well, it's fine. Well, can you just? I'll try to answer your mom's questions. Rapid. The fire. favorite. The favorite. Uh, beverage. I said it. You weren't listening because I was like, "What the hell's going on here?" <laughs> well, you'll see. I answered it pretty fast. Oh lord! But good. Good. We might as well finish rapid fire, right? Yes. All right. We still got six or something. Name the first word that comes to mind. Bull. Bull. <laughs> I thought you were going to say idiot. It's just what I just did. Okay. What is the last thing you watched on TV? Uh, I watched the finale of season eight or maybe, yeah, season six or eight of RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh my God. Should we tell them? Yeah. Oh my God. Funniest story you're ever going to hear in your whole entire life right here on stage mom podcast. So Mackenzie was at work the other night and she text messaged me and she said, Oh my God, mom, I am so addicted to drag racing. It's like the most addictive thing last night. I couldn't stop watching it. And so I was like, what? Cause anybody that knows her knows that that is the furthest thing she would ever like is like drag racing. So For people who, I literally didn't even know what drag racing actually was. <laughs> that's cars. Yes. Guys, that's cars. It's the quarter mile. Like you go from like zero to 185 miles per hour in a quarter mile. So anyhow, so I said to my husband, oh my God, Mackenzie is addicted to drag racing. And he's like, what? Mackenzie's addicted to drag. And then in the meantime, like the past couple of weeks, my husband's been getting into Formula One. So he's like, you know what? We got to get around the Formula One <laughs> because that's where it's at. That's really good. I said, Paul, it is so different than drag racing. That At least drag racing is just a quarter of a mile, but you got the Formula One. It's going around and around. She's never going to like that. She's never going to get addicted. So we're just going on about how Mackenzie is addicted to drag racing in shock of it all. So then a couple of days go by. We go to Plato's Closet and we're on our way home. And she said to me, we should do those exercises when we get home that we talked about. And I said, oh, no, I'm just so sore because I had done yard work. And so then she says, well, I'm going to do them anyhow. I said, okay, good for you. And she says, no, actually, I'm not. I'm going to watch drag racing. And I said, oh, my God, I can't believe it. Oh, and when she was at work, I had texted her back and told her, oh, you have to talk to your Uncle Danny because he used to go to the Gator Nationals all the time. So then I, um, Gator Nationals is a yeah, that's drag racing, racing up yes. in, um, Gainesville. So I, then, so we're driving home and I was like, I can't believe that you like drag racing. This is just hysterical to me. And she, at this point, it's, it looks to me like she's getting like emotional and excited about it. She's like, mom, mom. And I'm like, you know, you really need to talk to, to uncle Danny because like, I used to go to the drag races with him all the time. Paul actually went to the drag races one time with him too. I'm sure he would love to bring you to the drag races. We got to call him and tell him. I'm literally about to call Uncle Danny to tell him that his niece is into drag racing and he'd be over the moon about this and he'd have a reason to go to the drag races again. And she's in the passenger seat. Mom, no, really, Mom. Oh my God, Mom, Mom, I'm talking about drag queens. <laughs> I couldn't get my laugh out hard enough. It was the funniest thing ever. I had to call everybody. I, to date, that's the greatest story ever. I thought that she was talking about the car drag racing. I don't know why you'd ever think I'd be watching that. that that's why it was so shocking to me. <laughs> so funny. So anyhow, yeah. Greatest thing ever. Great story. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Back to rapid fire. Oh, this is so rapid. What do you impulse buy at the store often? Mm, I don't like literally anything. Um, <laughs> I'll just impulse buy like coffee from Starbucks and stuff. That's all. Okay. Yeah. What one food could you gladly get rid of for the rest of your life? Mm. Like dark. Oh, this is rabbit fire. Like dark meat or steak. I think I could live without it. Yeah. What is the first concert you ever attended? Taylor Swift on her Speak Now tour. And then after that, 
like years like that was my very first concert when i was young but then right. my real first concert was fall up with okay and i went to that with you we had so much fun mm -hmm. that was a good concert yeah we were really close um okay so now let's go back to the you can tell mom anything segment okay not sure what the hell i did before and i think i might oh no i have more rapid fire what was your favorite subject in school english <laughs> or journalism because i took journalism okay or peer counseling because we didn't do anything. Yeah. But I talked to people. And I think I helped them. <laughs> I talked Oh to really? People. I didn't know that. Yeah. Interesting. Did people come to you with their problems? You were like assigned someone and then you'd have to pull them out of their study hall and be like, Hey, what's going on? Why? It Did was, they express that they were having issues? I and think then... it was just like kids with bad grades. Oh. Or they maybe they did reach out and say they need a peer counselor. I forget. I never had one, and I didn't have the best grades. But, um, yeah, and there was, it was like a great I love you or something. Okay. All right, back to you to tell mom anything. If you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? Hmm. Oh, oh okay, this isn't rapid fire. Um, hmm. Be less lazy or not procrastinate so much yeah yeah i'll help you with that do you have a significant other no no mm. she's single are you actively looking i'm not actively looking but i'm not opposed to meeting someone okay if you could sit down with one person past present who would it be for one hour um this is so basic, but like Paul McCartney or Elliot Smith. And why would you want to sit down with them? I mean, Paul McCartney's like lived so much life and was in the greatest band of all time. So, I mean, he has a lot of wisdom to share. And then Elliot Smith, he just seems like such a genuine and humble person and a genius songwriter. And I took a lot of inspiration from what he writes, so mm -hmm. I would like to talk more about music with him. Okay. What is your greatest accomplishment? Hmm. Oh my gosh. I don't know. I think my greatest accomplishment is just starting music mm -hmm. and like putting about to have like a first song out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who knows you best and why? Um, I guess you kind of know me best in a way. Why do you think that? But then there's parts of me that you don't. I know everything about you. You don't think I, I don't, don't think so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why? Yeah. Just because you're my mom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's not because you tell me everything? I tell you most things. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Do you like going to the movies or do you prefer watching them at home? I like going to the movies. Yeah. It's more of an experience. That's what everybody says. Yeah. 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 I'm at the age where I just rather stay at home, not deal with people. I mean, I don't mind, but like if it's a movie I've been really wanting to see and it's in a theater, like I want to go. Yeah. I'm not going to wait. What was that one movie that you had Paul drive you all the way to some other county? Uh, the Goldfinch. It's my favorite book and it was being made into a movie. And it was only showing at like this really expensive, crazy theater. But it was like on my birthday, and I was like, "I need, I need this." So <laughs> I like cried about it. Like I wanted to go. So bad. And then that was just this past birthday. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that long ago. I was in high school. That's true. I was like a sophomore, I think. Okay. Name five adjectives that describe you best. I would like to say I'm genuine. Mm -hmm. That's true. As much as I can be. No, you are. You are 100% genuine. And I'm not just saying it because I'm your mom. You are. I would love, like, if, if I had a friend like you back in the day. Thank you. Um, I think I'm a deep person. Mm -hmm. I think I'm... I've called myself lazy like five times. But you are, so. Pretty lazy. <laughs> I'm, I don't know. Wait, five? Five. 
I named three. You, three. you named the other two. Okay, I'm quiet. We already said that, like... But it wasn't one of the... It is. it is one. Yeah, it is one. Um, and creative. Thank you. Okay. That's, like, my biggest fear. What? To not be creative? People not thinking I'm creative. Oh, I don't really? know why. Like, that's always no. been... Oh, well, my biggest fear is being boring. So that goes hand in hand. Like, one time I think someone called me boring in, like, middle school. Because you were quiet, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And that stuck with me so much. And, like, that's my biggest fear. Not that it matters what people think, but... But still, I know what you mean. Because um, my, hus- my, my husband that I have right now, mm-hmm. um, back when we were in high school and I was obsessed with him, mm-hmm. and I went to his house and I was wearing shorts... And he said, you know, Kim, you're really not pretty, where I this was going. but um, if you had a tan, you'd be hot. And from that day forward until I got together with him when mm-hmm. I was a little bit more confident as an adult, I didn't wear shorts. Yeah. I was so, it, like, if I went out, I was so insecure about it because I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, I was made fun of for being pale when I was younger, but I like being pale, so it never really bothered me. But if it was like... A boyfriend? That's yeah, what the hell does he think he is? Stick with me. Yeah, I don't worry. I give him crap every day. At least, at least every other day, actually. Yeah. About it. He's like, no, I didn't mean it that way. Oh, I mean, he's not. I I doubt he meant it. Like he that. totally meant it that way. He was a stupid high school boy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> totally meant it that way. He's an idiot. Obviously, forty six still not over. <laughs> okay. What is the most embarrassing thing that you've ever done in front of someone you liked? I told you one time, but I'm going to think of a different You one. didn't tell them, though. I know. I just hate, like, having to act like this is the first time I'm telling you for them. <laughs> it's just, like, so weird. You know I probably forgot. Okay, well, it's not, like, the worst thing ever, but... Oh, I remember now. My little sister, Christine, was trying to, like, um... <laughs> She was just, like, young and, like, wanted me to pick her up, so she was, like, clawing at me, and she, like, yanked my shirt down. <laughs> it was this tank top. I swear it was. And, <laughs> and I think you saw everything, but <laughs> I don't know. Because, like, I remember him trying to play it off, like, he wasn't looking, but I totally think he saw. Like, it's nice that he was acting like he didn't see anything. Yeah, but he didn't ask you out after. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I did. Oh, this is so true. <gasps> he did. <laughs> I forgot. Um, but yeah. So <laughs> okay. Who has had the greatest impact on your life? Mm. Uh, I don't know. I guess you. Me? Man, I'm getting a lot today. Or Christine. The nine-year-old? <laughs> oh. Yeah. I think my life would be kind of boring. Yeah. Without her. Yeah. Aw, she has to watch this. <laughs> Why do you think it would be boring? Like, what is it that she adds to your life? I mean, she's a little child, so there's a lot. But, but she's like your little best friend, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she was born when I was 10, and I was the only child for all my life, so it was nice. Yeah. Um, Something I'll else. never forget the time when she was just a little baby, so little, and Mackenzie's 10, and me and Paul had just, we were done. We were so tired, so Christine was sleeping, so we were like, all right, we're going to sleep. Well, we woke up with Mackenzie. She had a bottle propped up in the baby's mouth, and you were doing exercises to the television. Um, I think you were, like, feeling like an adult so you, because we were asleep. You had to take care of the baby. Yeah. And, there you were. You that happens figured. to me. Like, I get random. That's, like, that's something I would still do. Yeah. Like, just to feel like an adult. <laughs> like, just random bursts of inspiration of energy to, like, get my life together. And, like, my <laughs> idea of getting my life together is exercising and, like, taking care of things. That's, that was my mindset, for sure. <laughs> At 10. Yeah. Okay. What is, what, who is your celebrity crush? Paul Dano. Mm-hmm. Um... Who else? Nicholas Braun. Timothy Chalamet used to be the same. Like, eh. Kind of over it. Not gonna lie. Yeah. Not that it's about that. Like he's a great actor in person. I'm sure. Yeah. Like not that I'm just looking at his looks. Oh. 
Okay, so I was thinking, I have, like, different types, I feel like. Paul Dano is, like, my main type, but I think um, Patrick Swayze and Dirty Dancing is, like, the peak of the most beautiful a man can be. He's sexy. Yeah. And, like, he's not really my type at all, but I think everyone can watch that movie and be like, the sex this appeal. is literally is. the sexiest thing that's ever crazy. Well, no, I would... I definitely, that's just something I wouldn't say, but I can see where you would think it. You wouldn't agree with me? No. What? Not at all. Not him. Maybe it's the list. It's the way, he has a list. (laughs) (laughs) Could you please rewatch the movie? I've seen it many. Oh, yeah. I've seen these. Okay, move on. Okay. (laughs) Okay, so how would your best friend describe you? A good listener. Mm -hmm. You are. Probably because I talk all the time and interrupt you, so you just say quiet. You just like screw it. <laughs> if I have a chance, I'll say it later. Do you have any hobbies or interests outside of music? Reading and movies and nothing else really. No, not line dancing. It's your new thing, huh? <laughs> we went line dancing the other night, and that's it. Carried on into Publix. Mm. What is one item that you possess that you would run into a burning building to save? Mm, my journal. Okay. And then I have my dad's old journal. Uh, what journal's that? I got it when I was like eight for my eighth birthday. He wrote in it? It's like his prayer book. Is it a spiral notebook? No. Okay. What famous personality or celebrity do you admire and why? That I admire. <laughs> Well, my favorite director is Spike Jones, mm-hmm. and I really admire his outlook on life. Like, he's such a fun person. He's so, he has, like, a childlike heart, and, like, he's done very deep movies. Um, what movies has he done? He did Her. He did Where the Wild Things Are, which is my mm-hmm. favorite movie. But he's also done, he's been a part of, like, all the jackasses. So wow, he's broad. Yeah, he's yeah. but it's all like him. Like he has such a style to what he does and he seems like such a cool person. Oh, and he did a bunch of music videos too. Like for like one? Beastie Boys and oh, okay. he did the Buddy Holly music video. And then he also did photography for skateboarding. So oh, he's wow. like a skater. He does everything. Yeah, he's so cool and like he's just such a he's just so cool. And I love him so much. Okay. How old was he when he got started? How old is he now? Probably like in his, he's probably like late forties. Yeah. Maybe fifties. Uh, but he started pretty young. Yeah, that's pretty accomplished. He started with the skateboard photography and right. then he started a, I don't know. If, I don't want to say it was him, but he started the magazine. I think it was big brother that it was called that eventually turned into jackass. Whatever the thing was that turned into okay. jackass. He was a part of that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that you had told me about that magazine. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, now that I have um, done this all half-assed and backwards and sideways, <laughs> that concludes my questions. Did you have anything else that you wanted to say to them? So you've got your May 7th um, coming up. You come on at 1 p.m., Lauderdale Brewery in Fort Lauderdale. And um, it'll be her first time performing live as the front runner. Yes. And so we're really excited about that. So try to make it out to see her. Um, and then she's got another event coming up that's not set in stone yet. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's not. Yeah, but follow me on Instagram. Yes. When do you uh, think that um, going through the motions will be out? Uh, well, it's finished. It just needs to be, like, mixed and everything. So I'm hoping, like... I mean, I don't know when this is coming out. It'll probably be out. It's probably out. Oh, okay, yeah. (laughs) Good answer. All right. Anything else you want to let everybody know or any upcoming exciting things? Or where can they find you on Instagram? It'll be tagged. It's Ken's Maureen. Ken's Maureen. M A U R E E N. K E N Z M A U R E E N. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Uh, I have nothing really to say except I'm excited to go out and play live and 
I'm very happy with the people helping me out. Go follow them. I really can't say. I'll tag them in the comment of whatever this is posted mm -hmm. on. And their bands. Jeremy, um, Val. Go follow their Devin, bands, too. Follow yeah. Mango Juice, Heat Stroke Rats, Sleeping In. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. And Vanquish Studios. And Vanquish Studios. Yep. Okay. All right. That was fun. the time.